Hey everyone, so I'm just going to very briefly go over question four and five um, because we ran out of time to go into um, too much detail in the class. Um, yeah, so I'll just quickly go over it. So question four, we introduce uh, variables such as mouse x and mouse y. Um, so mouse x and mouse y are inbuilt variables inside processing which track the current position of your mouse in the processing window. Um, so you can have a look at it at the processing.org slash reference page um, if you want more information, but I'll just show you quickly. Um, and I'm going to print my mouse X location so you guys can have a look. my mouse Y. Just make the screen a bit bigger as well. So when I run this here, we'll see inside the console I've got my mouse X and mouse Y current position. So I'm off the processing window at the moment, so it's zero, zero. Um, and as soon as I enter this corner here, I should be um, around zero, zero. So we've got six and eight for mouse X and mouse Y. Um, so that's to be expected because that's where it would lie on the X and Y axis. And if I increase my position to the right hand side, then we're increasing along the X axis. So my mouse X value should increase, which it is. Um, yeah, so increase over the Y. So this can be really handy if you want to create a processing drawing that is dependent on the location of the mouse, which is what uh, question four is asking you to do. So question four asks you to use the system variables mouse x and mouse y to write a processing program that draws a line from the origin zero zero to the location of the mouse whenever the mouse is pressed. Um, so we've introduced mouse x and mouse y um, but we've also introduced this other element where uh, the line should draw every time we click the mouse. So there's two ways of doing this. I'll show you both. Um, Firstly, I'll show you. So this introduces conditionals, which we talk about next week. Um, but say if you were to say if the mouse is pressed, this might also be helpful for the assignment um, instead of mouse press looking at key pressed. Uh, so if the mouse is pressed, then I want to draw a line from the origin to the mouse X, mouse Y position. So um, for the people that had a go at this question, I saw a lot of you did it this way, but I'll show you some uh, errors that come up with that. So um, here I'm going to click my mouse and yep, yeah, that works fine. We've got a line from 0, 0 to the mouse X, mouse Y position. Um, but one bug that we'll find is that when I click down at this point and I drag my mouse, lots more lines start to follow it. And that's because we've got this condition inside draw and we know that draw keeps looping around. So what's happening is um, every time we loop through draw, it checks the condition, says, is the mouse pressed? Yes. Okay, draw another line. And if we keep holding down our mouse, the next time that draw loops, it says, okay, is the mouse still pressed? Yes, it's still pressed. Okay, I'll draw another line. So when you drag it, that's just like this condition looping around many, many times and it's drawing many, many lines, um, which is okay if that's the effect that you want. But for this question, that isn't the effect we want. We want it to draw just a single line um, when the mouse is pressed. So what I'm going to introduce is um, the mouse pressed function, which again, you can see on processing.org slash reference. Um, and I'll show you the buggy way of doing it first. So... We've got our void mouse press function. We draw a line from mouse X to mouse Y. Um, and this isn't going to work. So in theory, this should be working. But the reason why it isn't is that we're not looking out for this event. So uh, if you remember from week two notes, um, which is the conversation between the compiler and processing and the user, what happens is that setup runs once um, and then draw runs and draw loops forever. But because there's no draw function here, we're just running setup and then processing goes, okay, there's no more code to run, I'm done. And it doesn't look out for any 
more events such as the mouse pressed event or it wouldn't look out for the key pressed event as well. So even if our draw function is empty, in this situation it's important to have it here because it's going to keep looping around so processing is still active and so it's listening out to see if any of these uh, events are triggered. So now because it's still looping around, um, when I do press the mouse, processing is listening and it will run my code. So now that's working fine and if I click and drag, so I'm going to click and drag, it doesn't do anything because it's just looking for that single event. Okay, so it's really important to um, understand the different effects that a condition versus um, a mouse press function will have. So that's how you do question four. Um, and we have a look at question five. We've got practicing with mouse events. So, um, oh, so this continues on. Maybe I'll cut. 